To přijde, jenom volám se, se spoždění. Dobrý den. Dobrý. Dobré odpoledne. Dobré odpoledne, zdravím. Omlouvám se, že jsem byl maličko později. Ještě trošku ozvěna, já se zeptám uh, kolegu techniků. Máme tam to. Já mám promluvit nebo někdo z hostí? Pane biskupe, mohl byste nám něco říct kvůli zvuku? Určitě zdravím vás a omlouvám se, že jsem to pozdější maličku. Ano, jedna, dva, tři. Pane biskupe, ještě jednou, prosím. Jedna, dva, tři, čtyři, pět, šest, sedm, osm a dál neumím. Ano, už je to dobrý, děkujeme. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Still. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we still have some technical issues with the sound. One, two, three. It's better now. Okay. I hope that the technical difficulties are behind us. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this roundtable organized by Palatsky University in Olomouc and the Ukrainian Catholic University in Lviv. My name is Dominik Opatrny and I will be the moderator of this event. And now let me introduce our guests. I will start from those who are present here in Olomouc. A teacher of moral theology and bioethics at the Ukrainian Catholic University in Lviv, Maria Yarema. A judge of the diocesan court in Plzeň and a church lawyer focusing on matrimonial law and sexual delicts, Martina Vintrová. And one more teacher of moral theology and bioethics at the Ukrainian Catholic University in Lviv, Yuri Martinyuk. And I am very glad that there are three more guests who are connected to us with uh, the internet. A teacher of clinical psychology at the Ukrainian Catholic University and a psychotherapist, Oleksandra Nizdrany. Hello. Our next guest should have been Jaromir Marek. Unfortunately, he had to cancel his participation due to the disease of Queen Elizabeth. I am very glad that my invitation accepted a sociologist of media, Renata Sedlakova. Good afternoon. And I have kept to the end the Bishop of Plzeň and a former military chaplain, 
actually the first military chaplain of the Czech, Czech Republic, Father Tomáš Holub. Nice to see you and hopefully also... Now, this event will consist of three parts. At the beginning, I will give speech to our three guests, guests to present their point of view. Then I will raise some topics and there will be discussion. And finally, there will be a Q&A section at the end of the event. I wanted to encourage you those who are connected to us online to write your questions, to write them uh, to the chat and uh, to the discussion on Facebook. And we will pick some of those questions and present them later. We will start with our Ukrainian guests. And I would like to start from our psychologist, Alexandra, could you Tell us your point of view. Good afternoon. Yeah. Okay. okay. We do not hear you. Oh, just a moment. Why? Here, here uh -huh. you know, so it is not online because online we hear you. Here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Still, we do not hear you. Um, do you hear me? We do, we do. Maybe you could change your audio settings in Zoom, but you could... Ne, to bude problém naopak u vás s reproduktory, protože my slyšíme dobře. Our guests. So, Maria, could you speak? Um, my topic is an abortion uh, as uh, a moral problem, uh, even if it is uh, a consequence of rape in wartime or in other times. Uh, so uh, I just want to, to tell that uh, abortion is a, a real moral problem always, not uh, despite all the uh, consequences, uh, all the circumstances, even dramatic circumstances. Uh, from the personalistic point of view, uh, abortion is the killing of a human person. And uh, the, the fact that uh, a woman is innocent uh, doesn't change uh, the fact that embryo is a human person and wants to live and has a right to live and isn't aggressor. Uh, of course, there is great difference between uh, abortions uh, uh, due to rape and abortions uh, due to other factors, uh, because uh, only in, in the case of sexual violence, we can speak about really unwanted pregnancy of this uh, woman. In the other cases, woman is responsible or co-responsible for the pregnancy, uh, but here she is not. Uh, but this doesn't change uh, the fact that human person has a right to, to live. Uh, many psychologists, many people say that it's um, very difficult psychologically uh, to, to a woman to, uh, to carry a child from uh, aggressor. And it's true, it is difficult. Uh, but my question is uh, whether abortion isn't difficult for her. Uh, I mean, uh, is abortion a solution that helps uh, to, to heal this woman? Uh, to, to my point of view, it's not. Uh, and uh, I want just to say the opposite, uh, giving birth to this child helps uh, to a woman maybe more than abortion. Uh, what I mean? Uh, I mean uh, that uh, if a woman focus, uh, focuses her attention uh, on her sufferings, uh, on herself, uh, she uh, can't be uh, healed uh, so quickly if she focuses uh, the, uh, her attention uh, on the other persons. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, on the child, uh, Stephen Stosny, American psychologist, just said uh, that it is um, like a way of healing, uh, and he calls it uh, to create value, to create value of others. Uh, in this case, a, a woman doesn't need to create this value. She has value uh, in her womb, uh, inside of her, uh, this child. 
and to hold uh, this child somebody uh, valuable uh, some somebody worthy of uh, of her sacrifice can heal this woman because she uh, transcends her sufferings transcends herself uh, in order to to be uh, to to be uh, useful for other persons in this case uh, for to to this uh, child unborn child and as a consequence, she heals uh, more quickly uh, than after abortion. Uh, I mean, uh, it, this can be a, a way much more better than to 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 do to perform abortion. And if she if she is not able to uh, to take care of this child, uh, of course she can um, place this child uh, in the care of the state of uh, or the other institutions. She is not forced uh, to grow up the child. Uh, but it's better for for a woman uh, to to be freed from these remorses after abortion, and to be uh, freed from uh, from her sufferings uh, uh, easier, uh, more quickly, uh, to be healed from this trauma of uh, sexual violence. Uh, yes, of course, uh, it's uh, it's it's a trauma, it's psychological, moral trauma for, for a woman. Uh, of course, she is innocent, uh, but uh, when she performs abortion, she becomes uh, aggressor uh, on, on her side, uh, not only a victim of sexual violence, but also the aggressor uh, regarding this child. So summarizing uh, what ha has been said, uh, uh, a child is innocent, a woman is innocent, uh, but uh, to create uh, violence, uh, it's not uh, honest uh, in any circumstance, uh, circumstances. So a woman uh, who performs abortions, uh, she uh, doesn't he heal her herself and she uh, performs evil. And this is not uh, the way uh, of, of healing, uh, not, neither psychological nor moral, I believe. Okay, thank you. Now I would like to try the connection with Alexandra. Alexandra, okay. can you speak? Yeah. Do you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we yeah. do. Good, good. Okay. 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 Uh, good afternoon, dear friends. Um, about uh, rape, uh, rape is a crime and rape in war is a war crime committed by enemies to assert uh, their dominance, to destroy the boundaries and dignity of the individual and to assert their enemies' dominance. Before the start of the second uh, phase of Russian-Ukrainian war uh, by February uh, 2022, uh, we knew that the Ukrainians has to, uh, had to be ready and citizens uh, had to know about uh, safety and uh, self-defense. Uh, in the first days uh, of the attack uh, by the enemy troops, uh, my colleagues and I, uh, with whom we had united in uh, matters related to defense, um, insisted uh, on the evacuation uh, of civilians who thought that it was safer to be outside the capital, Kyiv. Uh, they have been uh, hiding in villages um, where the enemy was nearby, in, in basements that seemed to be safe, but under such conditions, uh, the civilian population is defenseless uh, because it is dangerous to live under occupation. And in war, the reality is different and it is very cruel. I will Im immediately say about the solution in the conditions of occupation and combat operations. The re uh, this is um, uh, evacuation to free and controlled territories uh, altered the use of uh, weapons for self-defense and the task of civilians um, is to be safe and to survive and the military political power and justice uh, task uh, are to protect and punish. What happens uh, to the victim? Horror, terror, pain, um, loss, loss of self, um, loss of control, loss of security, and the person has psychological trauma. Uh, psychological trauma is a topic that is hidden and um, must be brought up from the root of the Ukrainian word vechovanya, which means uh, upbringing, education. But in the Ukrainian language, there is another content of vechovanya is to open, hidden. 
do you know what I mean? Um, when a trauma uh, has happened, it begins to hide in a person and working with uh, something hidden due to the avoidance uh, of pain needs um, to be gentle, to be tender and careful as from a well-educated teacher. Then something hidden traumatic um, and therefore painful will appear more ecologically for a person. To teach the problem of psychological trauma and the same time to study it means to be means to work with um, what is difficult to grasp to see and hear what is connected with the history of trauma, and you needed to keep your eyes and ears uh, open and to be careful to be gentle and interest in interested in being uh, with an eyewitness who has a brave heart. The victim needs uh, needs um, from us from us um, such uh, subjectivity as uh, that I um, have just mentioned. The victim of violence expects um, us to be um, remembered, and what should this memory be? And in emphatic um, position with an open heart and mind to give way to traumatic memories, vulnerability pain and cruelty, maybe cruelty, um, evil. We work with dichotomies and the secret must become visible and we must have time for it. Research shows that um, rape victims has a higher rate of persistent uh, post-traumatic stress disorders that victims uh, of other crimes. Such a um, malignant influence of rape is not surprising given the uh, particular nature of this trauma. And the essential element of rape is simultaneous physical, psychological, and moral violence against a person. Violence is synonymous with rape. Uh, the rape's goal is to intimidate, um, enslave, and um, humiliate, uh, humiliate um, his victim to make uh, their his him or her uh, completely helpless. So rape, by its very nature, intentionally causes psychological trauma. In situations of terror, people spontaneously seek their first source of comfort and protection. Um, wounded soldiers or raped women call their mothers and they pray uh, to God. And um, this is, um, the sense of basic trust is destroyed when this call is not uh, answered. Um, traumatized people feel completely uh, abandoned, uh, ab um, abandoned and completely alone. Um, tra psychotrauma is a psychophysiological symptom complex that arises as a result of impact of psychodramatic event uh, or the inter intense uh, effects uh, of adverse environmental factors on a person's uh, physics and um, Trauma occurs due to the inability of the body and the physics uh, to process in traumatic influence. What can we do to help and deal with the effects of trauma? Um, anyone who interacts with victims uh, of sexual violence uh, and assists in their work, regardless of their role, should inform their uh, actions and decisions based on four key guiding principles, mm -hmm. safety, privacy, respect, uh, non-discrimination. And the effective communication is important for the well-being of the person who has a victim of rape. Allow the hard person to approach you, listen to the needs, um, ask the person if they are comfortable for uh, for a talk to you and uh, about where you are. Uh, even the person is accompanied, uh, accompanied uh, by someone else. Do not think uh, it is convenient for them to talk about the experience in their person's presence. Listen more than talk, stay calm, believe it, inspire the heart to 
to the take to take back control respect the right of victims to make their own decisions um, be within close zone um, of the heart person um, uh, thank uh, um, use words uh, of comfortable that are according to the cultural context some examples I believe you uh, build trust I it's good that you told me these establishments uh, relationship with women uh, thank you that you told what you have experienced it's about empathy you showed real courage that has talked to me um, calls down the encourages be and be patient with that person uh, who uh, had who has such experience of uh, rape of sexual violence um, except the fact that healing from such and um, uh, such an event can take years with ups and downs take care of yourself to be effective and helps to other when you work with such cases. Okay, thank you. Now it's turn for Yuri. So uh, while our meeting, our discussion is dedicated to the topic of uh, wartime sexual violence, my part of contribution to our discussion refers to the topic of moral evaluation of the sexual violence according to the uh, long time uh, moral theological approach. So uh, the topic of sexual violence uh, is not, uh, we, will, we will not find uh, this topic as a separate topic in some Magisterial, magisterial documents of the church, but uh, it appears often in the context of uh, some other relevant uh, topics like abortion or emergency contraception. But uh, it doesn't mean that uh, the moral tradition, uh, Catholic theological tradition doesn't know this um, uh, this issue of uh, sexual violence. And we know that, that during history, we have the long um, evolution of, uh, of the approaching to this topic, to this issue uh, during two, 2000 of the, uh, of the history of Christianity. Uh, so, uh, but we can find in uh, some magisterial documents, especially in catechism, some referrings to the uh, to the rape rape as uh, the form of uh, sexual violence of course uh, sexual violence uh, doesn't refers only to the rape there are much more uh, different forms of it but uh, the rape uh, is present in focus under the moral evaluation of, uh, of uh, church and uh, and moral theology. So we can find in uh, catechism such uh, reference like uh, rape is a violation of the sexual intimacy of an, another person. It does injury to justice and charity. Rape deeply wounds the respect, freedom, and physical and moral integrity to which every person has a right. It causes grave damage that can mark the victim for life. It is always an intrinsically evil act. Graver still is the rape of children committed by parents or those who are responsible for the education of children entrusted them. So uh, we can summarize it that rape is considered as intrinsically evil act, as being as form, uh, being as form of uh, sexual violence we can uh, compare it with all other forms of, of violence and consider them like uh, intrinsically evil act. What does it mean intrinsically evil act? That there is no circumstances and there is no conditions when it could be evaluated uh, good or even neutrally. 
it is always uh, uh, evaluated in negative sense. So uh, we can add to this um, uh, to, uh, to this uh, summarizing another one quotation from Evangelium Vitae of John uh, of Saint Pope John Paul II. Uh, that no circumstance, no purpose, no law whatsoever can ever make licit an act which is intrinsically illicit, since it is contrary to the law of God, which is written in every human heart, knowable by reason itself and proclaimed by the church. So in, in practical sense, uh, we can uh, summarize it that uh, we can apply to uh, two moral principles regarding sexual violence. So only uh, one who is guilty in this case is always perpetrator. Yes. So victim uh, never can be considered as guilty. So, uh, but the second principle, victim has right to protect him or herself anyhow by any means, uh, and even forced consent for the sexual violence should be considered as a mean of self-protection, as, as self-defense. Thank you. Now, Martina, could you continue? Uh, so, I'm a lawyer, so I focus um, on the sexual violence as uh, on the crime. And any crime is evil act. Uh, uh, which is so dangerous that they need to be punished. They danger, danger for the person and for the society. Um, I originally started with uh, uh, sex, uh, sexual violence um, against minors and vulnerable persons. As um, uh, our Pope uh, said on the Rome Summit in uh, 2019, uh, the abuse of minors is a widespread phenomenon in all uh, phenomena in all cultures, and uh, it was long time taboo in our society. But uh, now it's a subject of uh, research, systematic research, and it came out that uh, sexual violence against children is present in every society, every state, every culture, every re religion. There is no exception. Nobody, no, no religion, no uh, state is better than other in this uh, issue. Um, maybe uh, I could say that uh, sexual crime, uh, not every sexual act, act is crime. <laughs> <laughs> from the uh, law point of view, but it's uh, some sexual um, act uh, which is connected uh, with force or abuse of authority or um, uh, threat or uh, advantage of the defenselessness of the person, advantage of uh, her or his disability. Uh, there is some coercion from the uh, side of perpetrator, which I am focusing in my study and work uh, most is, uh, and what I uh, meet often is that uh, there is not enough uh, understanding of the effects of uh, sexual violence. Um, I can often see that uh, people uh, don't understand uh, uh, that uh, this is uh, not only um, uh, something against the body, the human body, but uh, that this act destroys very much and uh, the soul, the whole being, the personality. Uh, it's uh, uh, really uh, at the end is the person in pieces after ab abuse. And it's for me, it is much more important than only physical uh, effects. Uh, and if there is uh, no enough uh, understanding of these effects, there is not enough care and not enough uh, prevention of it. Um, 
uh, and uh, in the context of war, there is uh, also using uh, the sexual violence as war weapon. I was very surprised when I had it uh, from my colleague from Pakistan that uh, it's like normal normal uh, tactics in war. And also, uh, which I would like to point on is uh, that uh, during war there uh, is a much uh, uh, higher risk of human trafficking, uh, both uh, human trafficking of the children and also uh, women. Uh, yesterday, I uh, saw an article in Czech newspaper that in our republic increased the number of Ukraine, Ukrainian prostitutes. That uh, yeah, these uh, women has uh, no social uh, mm, uh, uh, like uh, security. security. Yeah, thank you. And uh, so they are more vulnerable such to start to work as prostitute. So. Um, uh, I this I I think this uh, shows that uh, the, um, sexual violence is really evil. It's uh, for me the di diabolic uh, act and uh, very uh, destroying act. But maybe uh, 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 me from your point of view was uh, the, the act of abortion. I was thinking yeah. about it uh, uh, because it's uh, to become pregnant like that is a very unhuman, horrible thing to become mother and to come to, to the uh, earth for the children. Uh, but uh, I am uh, not sure if uh, uh, it's uh, possible to uh, to uh, to uh, to prevent uh, abortion at any cost because uh, uh, we uh, like uh, uh, we uh, lawyers uh, know something like mitigating circumstances. Uh, some people can commit evil act, but they are not uh, responsible for it. And in the case of uh, such raped uh, women, they, I would say uh, we should offer any help possible, but there is also danger that uh, the woman can commit suicide. She can be so destroyed physically or, or psychically that she could not be able to care neither for the child, neither for other children. Uh, she, uh, there is uh, also the point that uh, not only she is a victim, not only the child is a victim, but uh, victims are all the other members of her family, of her parish. Uh, the ch uh, question of the child who is uh, who came for rape, how uh, she or he uh, would be treated, would it be loved and accepted or not? I think this is a very, a very complex uh, question, and uh, uh, we are speaking about uh, unhuman diabolic circumstances. Okay, thank you. Now I think it would be nice to hear our Bishop Tomáš. Uh, thank you for uh, saying our Bishop. <laughs> uh, and uh, I will speak in, in, from quite different point of view. I used to serve as a military chaplain for many years. And I think that in this discussion about the reality, horrible reality of the sexual uh, abuses uh, and crime acts uh, during the war, uh, maybe it's important also to see the picture quite broader. Um, and I have two topics I would like to mention. The first one is that uh, we know 
and all my colleagues uh, from the moral theology uh, area know it very well that uh, there is reality of how it is called in Latin, questio juris, the question of the right, of the law, and the question facti, the question of the reality. And in the normal situation, there is every time the tension between the question juris, how it's described by the um, principles, and the question, uh, question facti, how it is lived really by the concrete situation and by the concrete people. But the tension is absolutely uh, abs absolute great, is, uh, the biggest, let's say, uh, in the situation of the war. And we leave, uh, we experience the situation when we know some rules and we know what is the reality. And honestly speaking, not only on one side, but the reality of the atmosphere of the war, this is absolutely fulfilled with evil and with uh, some skepsis about some values. This is the reality we have to have uh, in the front of our mind if you discuss such situation. It doesn't mean that I say that uh, the principles are not uh, working in such situation. We have to protect principles. We have to say what are uh, things of intrinsic evil, as my colleague mentioned. But to be aware of this tension between the question juris and question facti is something that is quite uh, important if we discuss how to be supporting uh, the situation, the, the good in such situation. And uh, this is the first one, uh, what I would like to mention. And the second one is that we experience again and again, that there are two approaches to the war. One is a uh, approach that uh, says that war is something what uh, is one of the means how to protect, how to protect uh, people I am responsible for, some kind of the uh, understanding of the war as part of the international law. And we have uh, the term of the international law as a war, as a protecting uh, people that are that we are responsible for. And this is something what is officially um, accepted by whole the, uh, global uh, during the international law and during the charter of the United Nations. But on the other side, quite strong and still very present in all parts of the world. Also, as I can, uh, I, as I could experience it uh, among the democratic uh, military uh, commanders and soldiers, there is the other approach. It is very directly linked with the position of Karpun Klausewitz, which was the uh, warlord of uh, Prussia uh, in the 19th century. And he said uh, about the war is a continuation of the politic with other means and continuation that allows to everything what uh, leads to the victory. Because the history right, right, the uh, the uh, right rights decided uh, has uh, conquered the other one, and uh, I think that to be realistic, that we, uh, it's important to say we discuss our principles in such theater, in the theater of such understanding that is different from different sides, 
And my experience is, is not only that on one side, it's, so let's say on the Russia side, it's understood in this causal uh, way, but my experience from Bosnia, from Afghanistan, from Iraq, is, it's uh, understood in the same way also on the side of nature, of many, by many commanders, also by many politicians. It's not said openly, but it's the reality. And this create the atmosphere in which then it's very easy to do something what is absolutely unacceptable or tolerated. And this is something what we have to have in our uh, minds when we discuss such thing on the uh, theoretical and uh, academic level. Sorry to be such uh, realistic, but it's my experience from my years among the soldiers in different theaters of the wars from Bosnia to Afghanistan. Thank you. Thank you. And now I invite Renata to share her experience and her knowledge. Thank you. Uh, but uh, my expertise is completely different. My approach is completely different. I study media, so I can only speak uh, how the this topic, the topic of sexual violence, war violence, uh, is represented in Czech media. And unfortunately, I don't have any statistical data for uh, this. I try only to make my own uh, quick research uh, before this uh, before this event so i try to speak a bit uh, from a mine point of view but i hope i am not uh, uh, biased uh, i would say that the topic of uh, sexual war violence is so fundamental that no um, no media can afford to ignore it completely but on the other hand, if you search for uh, more detailed stories, uh, human interest stories, uh, events which occurred to a particular person, you almost didn't find them in mainstream media. Uh, there are several reasons for that or uh, several possibilities how to explain that. One of the uh, one of it is uh, the ethical uh, ethical ethical issue, and it could be also related with uh, uh, the prevention of secondary victimization of of uh, of these people. So, uh, and. Uh, So, so you and the, the, the second is the second explanation is maybe uh, is maybe uh, related with the more general general way of representing 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 events in Czech media like in general that uh, they usually speak more about uh, larger collectivities not about uh, not about uh, individual people which is very, uh, if you compare it, for example, with uh, British uh, journalism, it's a huge difference, uh, even within the style, how the event is represented. Usually the personalized uh, story is uh, more common in uh, American or British media. It's not that much the case of, uh, for example, Czech, uh, uh, Czech serious, uh, or quality journals, or quality newspapers, or or uh, quality television. Uh, but the representation of topic of this uh, sexual violence also was not used by the media, which are usually uh, called like in Czech we call them uh, alternative media, because they usually uh, present some propagandist uh, uh, messages or hoaxes or disinformation. So not even them uh, you know, 
didn't use this topic to increase their uh, interest of the interest of of uh, the readers or or viewers and i have one explanation for that uh, which is only it, it's only my my hypothesis uh, i remember it was uh, the end of 90s in the year uh, well, I, I, I studied uh, journalism at the time and uh, Vladimir Zelezny uh, was giving a lecture for us. Vladimir Zelezny was at the time the head of uh, most, uh, uh, mostly watched, mostly followed commercial television in Czech Republic. And it was uh, the year like uh, 1997 or something like that. And he was speaking uh, about the electronic uh, survey of uh, uh, television television viewers. It was a completely new technique how to me measure the rating and the share at that time. And uh, he was very enthusiastic about it. And he said something like, we even know how the viewer will react, but not only what he is watching uh, at the particular moment, which uh, television channel, but we can see from the data uh, what how how he changes, how he switches between between the television channels, and he uh, he gave us an example. We know, for example, that if we broadcast some really serious tragic uh, car crash or some event when the when the uh, uh, children are involved or the children are hurt, that serious part, serious portion of viewers switches very quickly to some other, to some other channel. And this is something which I feel somehow that it could be, could be uh, analogical case of the representation of uh, bar sexual violence. The topic is so, uh, fundamental, but on the other side, so uncomfortable for us as a viewer that we even don't want to see it and don't want to read about it. So the media don't use it because this is this is the topic which does not increase the uh, interest of, of uh, it doesn't bring more readers or more more followers. It it uh, it uh, makes quite the opposite. So maybe that's why it's from the uh, point of view of uh, theory of media representation, uh, I don't see any particular, particular problem, problematic uh, with the representation of uh, uh, bisexual variants in, in Czech media. Thank you. Thank you all. You have opened a lot of topics. And now I would like to go through them one by one. And I think it would be nice to start with some kind of definition or description. What is actually as wartime sexual violence? I think Martina, could you answer this question? Um, it depends. <laughs> Uh, I would say that uh, every uh, uh, system of law in each country has its definitions of sexual crime. In the canon law, it's uh, any uh, sin uh, against the sixth uh, um, uh, commandment. commandment of the Kalok, uh, which is made by force or uh, uh, with uh, abuse of authority or with minor or by public or uh, which caused uh, any scandal, for instance. Um, this is clear and uh, simple definition, I would say. Uh, the Czech law distinguish uh, two types of sexual crime. This is rape which is uh, uh, intercourse or, or made by force or threat or 
uh, taken advantage of uh, defenselessness of the victim. And then the second is sexual coercion. These are other forms of uh, sexual behavior like masturbation or, or such things also uh, made by force or threat or uh, advantage or also uh, with advantage of uh, somebody's position of power or advantage of dependency of the victim like um, pupil uh, teachers. Uh, but in uh, other countries, for instance, uh, there is uh, not uh, defini def defined uh, as crime the rape of the man. It's possible to rape only women, or um, some decades uh, uh, in our country was uh, not possible to rape uh, somebody in the marriage, or I think in Francia. Uh, there is uh, not a crime of incest or something. It um, depends uh, on the uh, law system of every country. And um, now is the great discussion in the Europe that the sexual violence should be defined uh, by existing or not existent of consent. The consent is uh, picked up uh, for consent for sexual integration. Okay. Does anybody want to add something to it? If not, I have a question on Father Tomas uh, concerning the rules of the war, actually. What are the rules according to which the soldiers should approach or treat uh, the captives, civilians, and whether those rules are usually obeyed. Yeah, the, there is uh, some part of the international law uh, that is called, uh, connected with so-called Geneva Conventions and Hax Conventions uh, that are divided in two parts. One part is called Use Ad Bellum, uh, it means uh, the right to start the war, but in the second part that is more link linked to this, uh, our topic we discuss now is use in bello. Uh, it means uh, the uh, law for to behave, how to behave uh, during the combat situations, uh, etc. And of course, in such uh, structure of the principles is absolutely clear said that uh, you can do only acts that uh, are orientated, orientated against combatment, uh, combatants, what are the people that are involved in the military actions on both sides. Uh, this uh, path should be uh, with some clear um uniform um, it should be uniform it means uh, and everybody has to understand that they are participants of this uh, combat uh, you has to treat all the captured people as human beings with the uh, that can't more uh, be uh, part of the of the combat, uh, civilians are not uh, involved in the combat, but this is the theory. And we know that uh, there are many things that uh, can influence uh, how the combat is uh, uh, orientated. And therefore, uh, really, we have to be aware of such principles. We have to uh, repeat again and again that these principles has to be fulfilled, but to be also aware that if there is some acceptance of such principles, never mind which part of the war 
uh, now we discuss. It is according to my skeptical understanding. There's only one reason why the principles are uh, fulfilled. And this uh, reason is that there is a fear that when the war is over, when the uh, war is finished, then we'll come to some uh, punishment, uh, uh, judicial punishment, some court of justice uh, that will uh, punish the people where they are witnesses that they uh, conduct, conducted some uh, war crimes. But there is only one uh, reason why it's not done if it can be used as a, some kind of weapon to fear of the future punishment. And, but the, the law uh, principles are quite clear by Geneva Commission and Hague Commission. Yeah. Thank you. Now I think it's time to focus on the victims. And I would like to start the question from the general point of view and focus on the victims of sexual violence generally. And therefore, I would like to ask Martina to tell us her uh, experience and her knowledge. I lose my computer. Um, um, like I said before, the effect of the sexual violence is devastating. Um, uh, uh, the, mm, the victims uh, have consequences on their bodies, physical injuries, um, HIV, pregnancy, other injuries. Uh, then uh, they, uh, I think our psychologist guest said it, uh, they suffer of um, uh, loss of trust. They uh, can have nightmares. They are uh, in the uh, state of uh, activity. They are afraid. Uh, they can uh, suffer uh, various uh, psychological problems, uh, most often depressions. Uh, they uh, lost uh, or they. Um, their self-perception is damaged. They often blame their self and uh, they uh, reject their body. Uh, I have uh, my own experience with women that uh, they uh, have uh, problems with relationships with the um, uh, men in marriage. They are not able uh, of the sex with their men, uh, of their husbands, for example. Um, they uh, sometimes uh, lost the, the meaning of life. Um, they feel that they also. Uh, these people are uh, much uh, uh, misused, uh, much often the normal population, uh, alcohol, uh, drugs. They uh, three times more often uh, are uh, attempting uh, attempt uh, suicide. Uh, I maybe will find some other uh, consequences. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Uh, mm, more than forty percent uh, of uh, the victims has. Uh, 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 things about suicide. So uh, also there is the, the post-traumatic uh, syndrome uh, and uh, the effects of sexual violence uh, uh, can uh, take the whole life, can preserve the whole of, of the person. So it's uh, we can see that it is not any any uh, 
that it's a serious crime <laughs> which affects um, the person and affects also the whole society even maybe from the economic point of view these people need treatment often cannot uh, work or work only part-time so um, uh, the society has to invest to them and they are not productive uh, uh, so I, the, uh, the, uh, the consequences are really serious, not only for the, the uh, person, as, and, but also for the whole society. Thank you. And now the follow-up question uh, on Alexandra. Could you explain how is it different in wartime? Just switch on your mic. Oh, good. Yeah, I can. I can. Okay. Um, okay. In war time, uh, when we talk about um, psychotrauma in uh, war time, um, I said before that we uh, talked. Uh, we talk about the um, war uh, war crime. Yeah, rape in um, in war, and. Um, if we talk about uh, victims and uh, the effects um, to victims here, yeah, we can, uh, we must uh, talk about uh, also uh, sexually transmitted infections, uh, uh, which is um, bacterial or viral infection passed from one person to another person uh, through vaginal, anal uh, or oral contact. And uh, it's, um, um, it's very necessary to to say about this because uh, it's a medicine problem and uh, um, in war time uh, people uh, who are, are the victims uh, women or men uh, because uh, or not only the women are the victims uh, of the rape um, or child or children uh, they uh, need uh, the medicine help and uh, it is a um, very um, important uh, part uh, of our support. And uh, it's a problem uh, when um, the people live in uh, occupation uh, and they uh, even um, um, can't, uh, can, can't uh, take their help uh, from um, um, government or um, another um, another um, system yeah uh, of um, help um, and um, also when we talk about uh, the uh, victims um, in wartime um, we uh, must understand the fact that the psychological psychiatric uh, support is also um, um, is uh, not uh, just a moment. Um, uh, I want to ask the help of my friend, Christina. Uh, just a moment, translator. Christina, can you help me? Uh, it's not uh, available yeah, uh, to, to, uh, to victims. Um, and um, that uh, time uh, which we can help them immediately and uh, they need the help immediately, medicine and psychotherapeutic, psychiatric, um, they um, have no uh, such uh, um, possibility to take it and it's a problem. Okay, thank you. Does anyone want to add something? or discuss the topic of the probably main consequence of pregnancy. We started the topic a few minutes ago. 
just asked about differences between war victims and the other victims. Uh, I believe uh, that there are some differences for children born uh, due to rape. Uh, I mean, if it is um, obvious in society that this child is uh, a son or a daughter of aggressor, uh, this child can be uh, the victim of some um, society and acceptance uh, of, of, of the country of aggressor. I mean, in our context, uh, after the Second World War, uh, such children born uh, after rapes uh, made by German soldiers, uh, they just uh, were called uh, fascists uh, by, by their uh, uh, but uh, by their friends uh, in the schools, uh, uh, but uh, we can avoid uh, this fact. Uh, I mean, if if a woman um, gives up a child, uh, if she uh, if she doesn't uh, take care of this child, uh, there are some possibilities uh, uh, to 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 make it. Um, um, like uh, hidden from the society uh, that this child is uh, a child of aggressor. Uh, so we should uh, look for such solutions in the case when uh, when woman gives up a child. And if she uh, takes care of a child, uh, it's more problematic. Uh, but I believe that uh, it depends uh, also on political processes uh, after the war. Um, uh, of uh, uh, of building uh, of peaceful relations between, uh, in this case, Russia and Ukraine. It's possible after war, uh, if Russia changes uh, in democratic uh, state, for example, uh, it's possible to to have some good relations, and this helps the society to uh, to to accept these children uh, and to accept uh, uh, this people of aggressor, uh, like normal people, like uh, the other people. Okay, Yuri, do you want to add something to the topic of victims? Yes, thank you. I have several comments to the former questions, to the former uh, issues uh, raised here. So the first, I would like to start from the uh, media issue, yes. Uh, and uh, concerning uh, Russian-Ukrainian war now. So in, in July, as I remember, 7th of July was published an official report by United Nations about sexual, uh, uh, sexual crimes, war crimes committed uh, during this war, yes, during the war between Russia and Ukraine. So it was as I remember, uh, the number of 124 proved uh, crimes, war crimes from both sides. But uh, during the presentation of this uh, report, um, the um, officers told that it is only the top of an iceberg. And we do not know the whole number of war crimes. And it is very difficult to prove, to prove them. Yes, and they uh, still are committing uh, even now. Yes, and it was July, so and now we have September, and we can imagine that the number is increased uh, as much. So this is my first comment. The second comment to the definition of sexual violence. So we have the Rome Statute, and in the Rome Statute we have the complete and a broad definition of sexual violence with description of all uh, of all conditions and circumstances of it and the one of most important within is a genuine consent is a genuine consent of victims so my own conviction is that during the war time uh, civilians are not in condition to give this genuine consent in any circumstance so even if you are talking about consent, this consent is always uh, conditioned yes, because they are staying in co coercive environment. So this is my second uh, uh, conviction, yes. And, uh, and uh, the, the next one comment regarding the, uh, uh, the status, the moral status of this of this crime of the sexual violence yes in moral theology we call it like a sin against justice charity and chastity 
So these three things. For example, for the St. Thomas Aquinas, this uh, the rape was considered as a, a sin against seventh commandment, against uh, the order of justice. Uh, for now, we consider it as uh, already mentioned as a sin against the sixth commandment. Yes. And uh, uh, Saint uh, John Paul II uh, changed the the view of this uh, of this problem of this uh, evil. Yes, and he and he passed from the order of justice to the order of dignity, women dignity. That this is an offense against women dignity. Uh, if we are talking about the rape and and uh, consider women as a victim of, of this rape. And uh, uh, considering uh, victims, I would like to end uh, my comment with quotation of St. Augustine, because he, uh, he mentioned uh, some case when uh, it happened some rape and just what was about this quotation. So he, uh, he insists that the harm to the body in no way compromises the integrity of the soul. So long as the soul keeps this firmness of purpose, which sanctifies even the body, the violence done by another's lust makes no impression on, the, on, on this bodily sanctity, which is preserved intact by one's own persistent continence. It means that if even uh, that... Uh, theological, uh, religional consequences of rape for the victim doesn't harm victim's soul. So uh, victim never is considered as, uh, as a guilty uh, person involved in this, in this, in this situation. So, um, um, yeah, that's all. all for mine. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you for this contribution. I think that St. Augustine mentioned it in connection to Lucrezia, who committed suicide, and his point was that the women who were raped should not be encouraged to commit suicide to wash down the guilt and the shame from the family. Yeah, thank you. Does anybody want to comment on those many points that Yuri mentioned? If not, or Martina, Martina, you. Oh, uh, I just, I'm thinking uh, that it's nice that in the moral theology, the woman right, uh, is not guilty. She has no, she, she didn't sin. But um, in reality, it can be uh, a big social stigma for her, uh, especially in uh, the religious communities when the chastity is highly. Um, uh, 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 so we can see well yes she's a victim but she's not virgin so who can marry her and uh, also this is uh, why uh, this um, uh, crime is uh, hidden it's latin crime uh, uh, one my friend said to me that uh, he was he became angry at the mass where there was praised a uh, uh, girl who, uh, who received two crowns, virginity and martyrdom. And he says, uh, well, I know more uh, a lot of uh, girls who were raped, who were abused, who would rather die, who would be ha happy to die and not uh, to have this uh, shame on them. And uh, what are you doing for them, God? Uh, so um, uh, the social, I would say that the social point of view is also sometimes difficult. So you now probably opened two more areas, the social stigma and probably the spiritual consequences. Can we speak about them? Does anybody want to answer this question? Oh, the, 
if I can say something. So I will switch now from my position uh, when I spoke about, uh, as a military chaplain and uh, from the point of uh, international law, maybe to something what should be closer to my today situation as a pastor and bishop. Uh, I think that uh, what Martina mentioned, it uh, shows that really the hierarchy of the values we have often in reality in our Catholic society may be uh, wrong or maybe uh, in some way dangerous for the people that uh, doesn't fit to some ideal uh, imaging of how as it has to be. And this is, I think, problem, and we know it quite well in our diocese, in the diocese of Poznan, that is a very missionary oriented diocese with a very few number of the uh, believers that uh, grow with their faiths uh, from the families, but they come to the church after many difficult situations in their life, after some crashes that then bring them to uh, see something deeper and uh, much uh, uh, robuster than they experienced before, and they find uh, the love of God. And uh, now we then we see that it's very difficult for the, let's say, classic uh, Catholic society to accept such people because uh, they, with their experiences, doesn't, uh, da don't fit in this idealistic uh, shaped uh, understanding of the Christian community. And one of uh, such uh, examples can be the value of the chastity uh, understood in biological way. And I think that these are very, uh, things uh, that are then so, uh, so in uh, reality, you are in a situation when the evil has played a, a hard role of the um, environment we live in. And of course, we, we know it from our peaceful Pilsner diocese. I can't imagine how hard it will be and how uh, change of mind, also Christian, Christian change of mind, it uh, will it, uh, uh, need in the society of the Ukraine after the war. So uh, it just became to my mind another uh, uh, spiritual problem which I met in, in the reality, and it is uh, the question of forgiveness. I often met uh, the situation when the victims are taught, you have to forgive if you are a Christian. And uh, that means you uh, need to be angry, you need not to uh, speak about it anymore. You need not to ask uh, punishment for your um, perpetrator. And uh, this press on forgiveness is uh, very harmful for them. This uh, misunder misunderstood concept of forgiveness. So I would like to add uh, one. Uh, small comment to the Father um, Tomas mentioned. So uh, when we, when I was talking about chastity and already uh, Father Bishop Tomas also mentioned about chastity, we should ask whose chastity we consider, who the sin against whose chastity is con is um, committed by uh, by sexual violence. So. The main thing to uh, to explain for the victim that it wasn't your chastity, 
it's chastity of um, of aggressor who um, committed sin against his chastity. So it's not your chastity uh, in touched in this case. So this is the severe way of reconciliation, self reconciliation. Yes, to understand and to to accept that my soul is not is not. Uh, uh, um, aggressed yes so i think that this is a very important spiritual moment of the victim uh, support i'm not sure whether i understand your point or martina would you like to comment on that uh, i think i did understand but uh, i think this also need to change a little bit of this uh, i would say uh, church language because i don't know where but uh, there was a girl uh, during the second uh, war uh, uh, killed by a soviet soldier uh, and uh, she said uh, uh, he wanted to rape her and uh, then killed her and she, uh, she said rather death than sin and now this is like a motto for the young people in uh, that uh, country uh, presented to her them rather uh, dead than sin. But she would not sin if she would be right. You know, this, this misleading, misleading uh, uh, motto, I would say. Um, if I may comment, I am afraid of another thing. Uh, there is always the danger that the, the offender would care only about his own relation with God, his own integrity and chastity, and forget that there is a victim who suffers. You know, there is this possibility that the sinner is thinking only about his own relation to God without the consequences for other people. Exactly, exactly. We don't know what thinks uh, aggressor, and even does he care about his own uh, action? Yes, about his own um, condition, spiritual condition or religious condition. Yes, we are thinking about victim and how to help it, help the victim. Yes, and how to uh, explain, how, how to uh, give the first step. To, to raise from this from this uh, uh, difficult situation yes uh, of course it it is uh, the personal responsibility moral responsibility of the aggressor we consider him always as guilty person in this situation yes and he committed uh, not only the crime in legal sense but he committed a sin in uh, uh, in theological in moral sense yes so he has two things to to, to solve the first one is a crime and the second to you know to to change his life yes to 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 at least to ask the um, uh, excuse yes excuse me for from the victim so but we are thinking from the point of victims position okay so now we have opened uh, a new topic the topic of uh, the offenders and i would like to ask father tomas again why on earth do the soldier do those things is it because of the orders or because of the frustration or would what can lead them to do such things? Uh, first of all, I have to say that I never, thanks God, have been in a situation where I personally, as a metro chaplain, uh, met such horrible things. Uh, uh, so it's not from my personal experience. I met many horrible things in the military uh, uh, during my uh, mission in. Uh, I work uh, in Afghanistan, but not not such things. So this is my first uh, uh, remark. So this is not my personal experience in my service as a mentorship one. But uh, of course, 
uh, there are different approaches of the military personnel in such situation. One is uh, this, there is some atmosphere of um, we, are, we are in so horrible situation in the in the combat, in the fight, that uh, all principles are, are away. We will uh, in few minutes maybe that therefore everything is allow, uh, allowed. So it's some completely changed mind in psychological and of course then also in the moral understanding of the situation. And this such uh, more or psychological status of the military uh, of the soldiers I have experienced. And it wasn't in such uh, tough situations as are now reported every day in Ukraine. So I can imagine that it is in some, uh, again, I said atmosphere of the totally uh, heaven, uh, not uh, heaven, other evil situation that everything is uh, possible, what can we help in this way to go a little away from these tensions I live with in. And uh, some understanding of the rules is completely available. This is one position and can happen. The second one is uh, to punishment. It, it happened that, um, and I know quite similar, not with the ray, but quite similar situation when one of the um, comrades in the unit is uh, um, uh, is uh, uh, by the enemy or by enemy linked with the civil population is hurt or um, he is shot or in some way he uh, leave his life. In such situation, the understanding of uh, the Old Testament, uh, it means um, we have to, uh, with the same response, come to our enemies, because in other way it will grow this uh, violence, is something what is also tactically understood as a way approach. And uh, I may, can mention also the situation uh, during the Vietnamese war in Vietnam. In Vietnam, the, uh, the communist uh, part tortured incredibly cool the American soldiers that was captured by the Vietnam uh, units. And then lost this uh, to death tortured people uh, that they were found by the American soldiers. And I don't say that's right, but the response of the American soldiers were that they started torture in the same way to Vietnamese to show that if they continue to do what is done, it will be as a respondent from the other side. Incredibly, it stopped the way of the torture of the uh, captured um, uh, American soldiers. So only I can explain how horrible the way of the thinking in such a situation is. Uh, so this is, uh, I said, the first is the atmosphere, the second is punishment. Uh, and of course, it's also some last some situation when the when something what is uh, hidden normally in the normal life in the uh, wishes of the people now has be open because they continued before the war to follow such things uh, on uh, videos and uh, they made it uh, through the. Uh, their imagination, and they now have they have the possible to uh, do such things also in reality. So this is also some uh, reason why it is so spread because such people 
there are men um, among many volunteers that fight in such kind of conflicts as for instance now in uh, in Ukraine because it's not uh, there are people are not regular mobilization uh, soldiers but they are that as volunteers uh, wanted to go there for the money but also for some experience that was not allowed uh, in the normal life so let's say such three reasons I can imagine as a reasons uh, that uh, can play the role in such horrible, cool situation as a, a war crime is around. Thank you. Unfortunately, in the hall, we lost the connection for a moment. So we heard the first reason, then we heard about the punishment, and the third one was? The third, uh, the third one was that there are many volunteers among the soldiers now, especially on the uh, um, uh, Russian side now. And uh, the psychological profile of the volunteers uh, willing to go to combat are people that uh, many times are ready to go there to uh, have the opportunity experience things that they in the normal situation can follow only on in uh, or, uh, in on videos or um, internet or uh, in their imaginations and such people they now can uh, in the situation when where it thought that it will not be punished uh, to uh, try how to do such things in the reality unfortunately unfortunately but this is the reality. Thank you. Does anyone want to comment? Yeah, Maria. Just uh, want to add, uh, Bishop said about some specific atmosphere, and it's true. Uh, but uh, in our situation of Russian-Ukrainian war, um, in Russian Federation, uh, 10 years before the war, uh, President Putin uh, uh, was uh, speaking about continuously about uh, the fact that Ukra Ukraine uh, doesn't exist. Uh, Ukrainians are Russians, but they have forgotten that they are Russians. Uh, they are uh, not uh, so. Um, uh, they are not so uh, worthy Russians as we are. So uh, I mean. Uh, this atmosphere of hate before the war and uh, then uh, the war, when the war began it, uh, it's like this hate uh, uh, has had the possibility to be uh, open to the society the, they, uh, the Russian soldiers they didn't believe that Ukrainian women are worthy of the compassion of, of the uh, of the uh, human uh, relation. Uh, I mean, uh, they believed uh, that these persons are, uh, are, are not so, uh, so human, uh, so, so equal with other humans uh, uh, because uh, they were uh, prepared to this uh, mentally. I mean, uh, this atmosphere was prepared uh, 10 years before the war. Thank you to add this. Yes, I completely agree, and this is absolutely horrible that the force uh, reason can be this political uh, preparation that is misused to people. Yeah. Thank you, because this is still worse. Yeah. Thank you to mention it. Yes, exactly. I would like to support Maria ideas idea about uh, this uh, uh, long time preparation of this atmosphere and uh, uh, and just mention some example from the history so as you remember in 1998 during the Rwanda uh, court so uh, sexual violence was first time used as uh, uh, defined as a mean of genocide so it, it as a tool of genocide yes and from this uh, moment yes it is used in humanitarian law in international law and uh, we can we can find some uh, atmosphere in um, uh, russian soldiers evidences when they are asking our 
uh, our soldiers uh, thinking to, 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 to be captured, will you mutilate us or not? So we, we understand that this pro propaganda still works there. So we know that sexual violence is not only rape. Yes, is uh, even sexual tortures. Yes, as we can see. So we understand that this propaganda is present there. Yes, and why are they asking about this? About this myth? Because uh, Ukrainian side um, um, follow is following the uh, all humanitarian rules. Yes, Geneva conventions, so on. And for, for us, it's strange why they are asking about this. If I remember correctly, at the beginning of the war, there was a fake video produced by uh, Russians, by Kremlin, uh, showing Ukrainian soldiers uh, shooting uh, the captives into legs. So this was also part of the propaganda to, to uh, prevent soldiers from surrendering. Uh, I don't know whether you know uh, about a tragedy in Olenivka when uh, Ukrainian captives were killed uh, by the bombardment uh, and Russians say that uh, Ukrainian forces uh, have killed them with the missiles uh, because they were afraid that our uh, captives uh, will cooperate with the Russian government, but it's not true. So they just they want their soldiers to believe that Ukrainians are very cruel, even with uh, their soldiers, uh, and will be much more cruel with uh, Russian ca captives. So uh, they want to avoid uh, desert, uh, to have deserts, and, uh, and they uh, just uh, tell the stories as this uh, Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, do we have Alexandra here? I can't see you, Alexandra, but I think it would be nice to have your comments. Unfortunately not, she's on the list, but not, uh, not speaking. May I have a question or comment? Sure, sure. Great. Renata? Uh, I've read uh, an interview with uh, some uh, researcher. She was historian and she studied uh, sexual war violence since medieval times. And she said in that interview that uh, uh, sexual violence is a kind of warm uh, uh, arm a warm a weapon, sorry, uh, which was used since uh, since uh, at least medieval times. But on the opposite, uh, um, uh, Tomáš Holub just said that uh, at the mission he followed, and if I'm not wrong, I, I suppose that he was uh, in uh, missions organized by, by NATO. And that uh, he uh, wasn't in a situation when uh, this happened or something like that or he wasn't in contact with the uh, with the person who uh, had a problem like that or something like that so my question was or my 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 thought was uh, isn't it possible that uh, the sexual violence is a weapon of a pre-modern uh, way of of war and that it implies that uh, the organization of Russian army is not modern army, not yet modern army, that it's still somehow sticked in, in some historical period. And only, it's, it's only comment, maybe kind of brainstorming, which came to my mind when I was following this, uh, for listening your speeches. Uh, then I uh, may have my reaction. Thank you for this uh, remark. Uh, some simple answer would be, yeah, it is really so that it uh, shows some other understanding of the war uh, as a, uh, some instrument, uh, of some political instrument in the uh, Russian understanding than in, let's say, 
West democratic countries. This, I would say, yeah, it is. And in the situation, with situations uh, I have mentioned, it really didn't happen from side of uh, NATO military units since I know. I know. Uh, I can't say that never happened, but uh, I never met such situation. But I add also, and I would like to go back to my first remark, that I doubt that in the reality, such understanding that you can use all means to win, because war is either or, is uh, not present in our society among politicians and military leaders. I am quite skeptic. And I think that many times uh, we, uh, on the academic level, are more idealis ideal ide idealistic than is the reality. And this is also what I would add. But I hope that if we see the percentage of the uh, danger that it can repeat also in today, uh, war conflict is on the West democratic countries, uh, let's say 10%, or 20% in on the other side, 80. So in this way, but I wouldn't say it doesn't uh, uh, exist among the people that have an influence uh, to organize such horrible thing as a war, also in West countries. Alexandra, we are now discussing the reasons why the soldiers are committing such crimes. I would like to ask you as a psychologist, uh, what are your insights? How to work with soldiers who um, done such crime? Well, my, my question was, why do they do that? But you can speak also about how to work with them or what could be the consequences for their life. Mm -hmm. um, um, they uh, do this uh, because of their um, because um, no, to assert their dominance and uh, they uh, have such um, um, maybe not vision but instinct maybe um, to destroy um, their enemies for them like um, uh, the the woman or the man or the child who are the victims uh, they are the enemies also for them and uh, it's um, like such um, psycho uh, dynamic uh, dynamic aspect uh, um, to destroy that uh, boundaries of country uh, and to destroy the um, um, the boundaries of that person um, the, um, to destroy the dignity of that uh, persons um, uh, which are the victims uh, and um, not to say their enemies uh, dominance um, um, it's like um, um, the human the humanization aspect of war and of the portrait of enemy Soldier, soldiers who are the enemies um, is um, in the part uh, of uh, ideology um, of um, Russian um, army uh, and um, in the part of racism if we talk about uh, the um, this war, uh, Russian-Ukrainian war. Hard to work with them. <laughs> um, um, I um, have no um, the um, 
my opinion, like a psychotherapist, Ukrainian psychotherapist about the um, mental health and psychological well-being of Russian soldiers. Uh, but I know that um, we must um, maybe protect our civilians, uh, civilians, and uh, we. Um, I said that uh, at the first uh, um, my speech um, that um, we um, we um, much must uh, teach uh, the civilians uh, civilian population um, to um, to be in safe territory um, to be to to um, to use the self defense and um, have to protect uh, themselves uh, of that and um, it's uh, about uh, the um, maybe um, politics yeah and uh, the politics uh, of uh, army forces of ukraine okay thank you and uh, we have only 15 minutes so i think it's time for a q a section and there is space now for those who are listening to us here in the hall or uh, or online or you could raise questions towards each other is there anyone who wants to start if there are no questions uh, i would stay with the topic we left just now and that's the father fate of the offenders um, do any one of you have an opinion on how those people can can work or behave in the society after the war Maria Martina Yuri okay, I can start so uh, I think it, it's a big uh, challenge, yes, to to answer this question, even to think about this question, yes, how to so socialize uh, them, yes, because after uh, we we have also some evidences from news that soldiers turning back to to the society, they are trying to continue behavior. Yes, they are trying to continue this behavior uh, expressed during the war. I am talking about the aggressors. Yes, and uh, uh, they can kill someone, uh, abuse another person in the in in own society, in Russian society. So how to, you know, this uh, sword to hold sword. Yes, because. Uh, th it will be very big challenge for for the Russians how to uh, how to treat this person after the war ending. Uh, it, it will be a problem of Russia, I think, mm -hmm. more. Yes, um, yes, maybe some cases could be present in uh, in Ukraine in Ukraine society because we don't exclude some cases yes from both sides but the mess the massive um, phenomenon yes is uh, uh, refers to to, to the R russian reality yeah. uh, may i add something sure sure <laughs> now from the personal experience uh, i am sorry uh, about uh, to uh, not uh, be totally uh, satisfied with the position of my colleague uh, because uh, my experience with the soldiers returning from the missions uh, in Afghanistan and Iraq in the Czech Republic but, uh, say, uh, say that uh, this is not problem of aggressors. Is a problem uh, of the of soldiers at all 
because uh, they had to behave themselves in the way in which many very important uh, values are um, forgotten to have the ability to uh, survive. If I say it in quite uh, simple way, the relations doesn't play, relations don't play important role. The important role play rules and to be able to obey and not to understand the other, not to have some uh, uh, emotional understanding of the other position, not some tiny understanding of differences. This all is dangerous in the military part, but is absolutely necessary to live a normal life. And therefore, I only uh, can add that to help soldiers to return all soldiers that has protected our nation or your nation or our societies is very, very important a task of all the society because they will come damaged, damaged by the experience of evil. And this is very important, is not only the question of the business, it's a question of everybody who lived for a longer time in the, in the environment of the war. I note it quite well from the military personnel returning from the peacekeeping operations. And this is a problem. I can't imagine how big problem it will be for the people staying for a longer time in a real war uh, situation as we see now in uh, East uh, Ukraine. Therefore, I pledge only uh, to be aware of such responsibility of the society. Sorry, but this is some pastoral understanding. Uh, for me, just uh, France and Germany and their reconciliation after the Second World War is a good example of how we should proceed uh, with Russia uh, after all of these events. But uh, the necessary condition is that the war ends and ends uh, with just peace, uh, with the occupation of Ukrainian territories. And then we should uh, look for this re reconciliation uh, with Russian people uh, as French and German uh, peoples, uh, they, they have found it, so. Thank you, and I think we have time only for my very last question, and the question is, where do you see hope? And I will start with you, Maria. Where do you see hope? Is there any hope yeah. in, the, in the whole topic? Uh, yeah, uh, it is. Uh... Uh, but now it's difficult to to speak about this because this uh, uh, work con work continues and now it's uh, much more difficult. But I believe that uh, um, history uh, like um, finishes uh, uh, if 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 now uh, we don't win uh, this war, for example. But in the future, maybe in hundred years or. Uh, in some uh, time uh, we will win uh, because uh, uh, the history says that uh, empire can't, can't exist uh, uh, for, 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 the, for the long time uh, and uh, justice uh, will win and it is hope that uh, that everything will be uh, just but we don't know when when it will be uh, if our generation of ukrainians uh, will see it i'm not sure uh, but uh, for me it's uh, like a, a great hope that uh, after four, uh, four centuries of the war with russian uh, with russia uh, with moscow uh, uh, empire and then with russia so we are still alive ukrainian people still uh, we are, we are, we have nation so uh, i mean uh, this cruelty finishes uh, this war uh, will finish uh, and justice will prevail i'm sure thank you the same question 
for Alexandra, please one thank sentence you, or you, something you. like that. Um, I um, think that my hope uh, is in inspir um, inspirational work and um, work in the system uh, of um, um, mental health uh, systems um, support. Yeah, and uh, also um, maybe uh, I hope that um, Russian Federation will transform in future. Uh, and they um, also, uh, I, I have a hope about them, and uh, I have a hope about uh, that um, um, our victory. Yeah. Thank you. Now, Yuri. So, my hope is only one staying together and being in unity. That's only. Only one my hope is yes, that we will resist. Yes, that we will have idea, common idea and common thought. And we will have the common goal to reach it. Yes, it will, it, it's a good end. Martina. It may be like a phrase, but it came to my mind. In God we trust. Because <laughs> uh, sometimes I really lose my, my hope that something will change. And I cry to God, why, what, how can you? Uh, so I believe that the uh, people People are originally good and they want to be in in peace, want to live in peace and and uh, every every small piece of good in people can be used by God to do something. And so it's we are on the logic of a good so so if good is the the last, the biggest good, the evil must end. But when it it's a big question, and how many sorrow is uh, before us? It's also a question. Maybe our I would say my personal uh, task is not to uh, not to start to be evil and cruel and because of this evil and try to resist with good thought. It's my hope. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Renata, what's your hope? Actually, maybe I don't want to move my thoughts or express my thoughts after, after this very nice a speech we have heard maybe it was a nice ending or should i <laughs> because maybe the hope could be this uh, of the current news or uh, on uh, social media for example yesterday as i saw some shooting of uh, russian troops just uh, driving away from war line so Maybe there is hope in what is currently occurring there. So Thank you. I hope the war will end sooner the better. Mm -hmm. We hope so. And Father Tomas, where do you see hope? Yeah, I have two hopes. <laughs> but the small one is that we will stay in Western and Central Europe uh, faithful to the values and not only to own, uh, uh, own prosperity. This is my hope that we will resist this temptation to uh, support more to own prosperity than the values. This is my small hope. And the big one is that resurrection is some is true uh, story. Then, uh, the hope is based on something what is not 
jsou oni i lůží. Thank you, thank you for your words and thank to all the speakers here and please join me in thanking them. Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.